I'm continuing with Chapter 2 of Modern Advanced Accounting in Canada. We're going to cover a portion of Learning Objective 2, Non-Strategic Equity Investment, Fair Value Through Profit or Loss, including all the journal entries. Remember that all non-strategic investments in equity shares are automatically classified as fair value through P&L unless the investor makes an irrevocable election at the date of purchase to instead classify their non-strategic investment as fair value through other comprehensive income, OCI. If the investor does not make this irrevocable election, the investment in equity shares must be reported using fair value through profit and loss. Why are all non-strategic investments automatically classified as fair value through P&L? The assumption is that these shares are held for trading, either in the short term, in which case they're going to be classified as current asset, or in the longer term, in which case they'll be classified as non-current assets. It's this automatic assumption that non-strategic investments are held for trading that causes them to be classified as fair value through profit or loss. So how are these investments recorded? IFRS 9 requires that all non-strategic investments be recorded at fair value at the date of acquisition, which is really the cost of the investment. This meets the requirement under the conceptual framework that assets be recorded at their acquisition cost. So we're matching the conceptual framework. Transaction costs such as legal or broker or administration fees are immediately expensed on the income statement. This really makes sense considering how other gains and losses in this type of investment are also recorded. Dividends, which are receivable or received, are recognized in income as dividend income or dividend revenue. That's when the dividends are declared by the investee. Why? Because dividends are legally receivable when they're declared. So the investor has to recognize the receivable as soon as they're declared. When the cash is received, the dividend receivable is actually credited, making it zero. And then cash is debited to recognize that it's been received. At each reporting period, the investor has to adjust the value of the investment to its fair value. This is sometimes referred to as marking to market. Now, keep in mind that this also meets the conceptual framework, the requirement to provide useful information. Since passive investments are expected to be sold in the near future, Fair value shows the users of the financial statements the potential cash flow that would happen if the investment was sold. That's why they're adjusted to market at every reporting period. The difference between the carrying amount of the investment at the period end and the fair value is often called the fair value adjustment, or it's called unrealized gains or losses. This is recognized on the income statement. And really, this totally ties into the name, fair value through profit or loss, because the income statement can also be called the statement of profit or loss. When the investment is sold, the difference between the cash received and the carrying value of the investment is reported as a realized gain or a realized loss on the income statement. Keep in mind that this realized gain or loss is the difference between the current carrying value and the cash received, not the difference between the original acquisition costs and the cash received. Why? Because every single time you made an adjustment at each reporting period, you're already reflecting the fair value. So at the date of sale, your gain or loss is only the difference between the cash you received and the current carrying value.